हेलो एवरीवन अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू माय फाइकोलॉजी क्लास आई एम डॉक्टर अर्पिता एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट माइक्रो एलगी कल्टिवेशन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट कल्टिवेशन ऑफ स्पिरुलिना एंड डुनालियाला हेयर सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड See, uh, since a decade ago, studies on single-cell protein had drawn the attention of scientists to bridge the protein gap. The use of algae as food and feed is known since centuries, as they form part of the diets in East Asian countries as well as the natives of Central Africa. Some of the algae, like chlorella, cynodesmus. Silastrum and spirulina have been found to be very suitable for mass cultivation and utilization. The advantages in using algae include simple cultivation, effective utilization of solar energy, faster growth and high protein and nutrient content. Spirulina is, you know, an extremely beneficial algae in this regard. Hmm. Cultivation of spirulina in tropical countries is very very popular these days. You know, it is cultured in various countries like India, China, Japan. Mass cultivation is easier than other algal cultivation because uh, aeration of CO two is not necessary for the species since it can maximally utilize. the amount of carbon that are supplied by using bicarbonates of the culture medium spirulina appears to have considerable potential for growth and development it is emerging as a cost effective means so this is a very important point cost effective means of improving livestock and crop productivity in a sustainable manner why sustainable see it doesn't cause any amount of pollution whatsoever spirulina are multicellular and filamentous blue green algae that has gained remarkable importance in health food industry and as a protein and vitamin supplement to aquaculture diets as well it is packed with macro and micronutrients for growth and development of man and animals so this is not only beneficial for man it is also equally important or beneficial for animals spirulina grows in water and can be harvested and processed easily this is the most important point it is it can be done very easily right it is grown in an alkaline culture solution with nutrients that is poured into a wide shallow culture pond and stirred by gentle stream it helps in efficient photosynthesis of the algae due to high ph remember since it's alkaline ph is high due to high ph of the culture media spirulina has no competitors since it is alkaline usually other uh, species do not come and grow here consumption of spirulina is of great health benefit 100 grams of it contains 63 grams of protein other than protein polyunsaturated fatty acids vitamin b1 b6 b12 and fortified with a lot of iron It is recommended for various deficiencies like anemia. See, world production of spirulina has reached five million kilograms cultivated. Different production of uh, different production system of spirulina are as follows. Now we are going to discuss the different production system in brief. Okay. Now see, first we'll talk about traditional. system or the raceways or ponds here what happens see raceways or ponds are easy to implement and are suitable for only few pond tolerant species not for everything right they are dependent on weather and seasons 
they require large floor space and high water consumption correct on contrary if you come to this one see the other is photobioreactor the innovative method what happens here see these are closed cultivation system suitable for cultivation of all species since these are closed systems you know there are no external disturbances and therefore it is not specific to any particular type of algae it is protected from external contaminations as well now in open pond what happens other species can come in and contaminate the culture but here that is not possible producers control the culture parameters like ph temperature or light right and production is also eight times more than that in a pond right now see we will talk about the fertilizers used for spirulina farming the basic ones are sodium bicarbonate citric acid urea potassium nitrate sodium chloride <clears throat> potassium dihydrogen phosphate iron sulfate magnesium sulfate large scale cultivation needs calcium in the form of lime okay and gypsum of calcium chloride clear see fertilizers should be of very good quality and should be soluble in water see if the fertilizer is not of a good quality what might happen it may produce toxicity in the culture that should not happen fine then what are our basic requirements the mother culture growing media a long stick for agitating the media that is to mix everything you need a long stick ph testing apparatus like litmus paper polypropylene or nylon which is of 30 to 40 micron grade for filtration purpose thermometer for temperature monitoring that is you need to maintain 20 degree celsius in uh, which is a minimum requirement for its growth but temperature ranges 25 to 37 degrees celsius for large scale cultivation proper pools or ponds has to be prepared carefully ah, and the minimum pond size for commercial cultivation is 3 to 4 meters in width and 100 meters in length clear now we'll see the spirulina cultivation process in the form of a flow chart hmm 50 ml of spirulina culture is taken from exponential growth phase this uh, see why you are taking it from exponential growth phase it will give you the maximum yield fine then it is centrifuged at 8000 rpm for 10 minutes at 4 degree celsius in a 50 ml see 50 ml centrifuge tube the harvested cells are washed and uh, washed with distilled water you are not using any type of tap water and all to maintain sterility of the culture repeated freezing and thawing in 50 molar sodium phosphate buffer is carried out for 3 to 4 times then what you do you will centrifuge the tubes at 8000 rpm for 15 minutes at 4 degrees celsius after that what are you going to do you will add 30% saturated that is weight by volume solid ammonium sulfate and keep it for 4 hours at 4 degree celsius and then centrifuge at 11000 rpm for 15 minutes at 4 degree celsius right next what are you going to do then you will get a blue supernatant hmm you are going to take that out and 60% solid ammonium sulfate is added to it thereafter what are you going to do you will keep it for 4 hours at 4 degree celsius and then centrifuge at 11000 rpm for 15 minutes at 4 degree celsius fine then you will get a blue precipitate which is 
taken and 2.5 millimolar sodium phosphate buffer is added to it at pH 6.8. Then it is dialyzed against same buffer overnight at 4 degrees Celsius. Then purity of the collected sample is calculated using spectrophotometer. You must calculate the purity of what you have got whether it is pure or not. Okay, so this is how you carry out the cultivation of spirulina. Now, basic uh, plan for cultivation of Dunaliella is also same. Okay, just take a note of it here. See, Dunaliella is also a green unicellular flagellate alga. Okay, and it's one of the richest natural source of carotenoid that is uh, beta carotene. Hmm. The halophilic species of Dunaliella also accumulate very high concentration of glycerol. This is very important. This genus has marine and halophilic representatives along with few freshwater species. Fine, it has a very wide pH tolerance that is 1 to 11. It can survive in acidic, neutral as well as alkaline pH. Fine, now coming to its mass culture. Just note it, I have written it out so that it becomes easier for you. Hmm. Uh, the most commonly used medium for Dunaliella culture is modified Johnson's medium. Please note this name. These are strict autotrophs, hence are able to take up carbon dioxide and HCO3 for photosynthesis. Hmm. These are the sources of carbon. You know, right? Carbon is required for photosynthesis. Supply of inorganic uh, carbon is required for halophilic species at very high salinity. You know what happens at very high salinity? Solubility of inorganic carbon is low. So supply of inorganic carbon is required for these type of species. Hmm. The best source of nitrogen for Dunaliella is nitrate that is ammonium nitrate ammonium acetate ammonium chloride high temperature is detrimental for its growth detrimental means it will cause death of the organism if temperature is very high phosphate is the best source of phosphorus okay the optimal concentration is 0 0.02 to 0 0.025 grams per K2HPO4 hmm? high concentration inhibit the growth of Dunaliella so they should, the concentration should be maintained very carefully they can tolerate a wide ratio of magnesium to calcium sodium is a chief requirement for their growth the optimal Chloride to sulfate ratio for growth is in growth in Dunaliella is 3 is to 2, whereas that for beta carotene formation is 8.6. So one is 3.2, the other is 8.6. Fine. Low concentration of iron in a form of in a form that can be as estimated are essential for growth of Dunaliella. Growth media is fortified with various trace elements like zinc, cobalt, copper and manganese. The optimum pH for growth of marine species is 6 and that for halophiles is 9. The optimum temperature for growth is 20 to 40 degrees Celsius. If the temperature is high, it is lethal. Fine. Dunaliella can be cultivated in open raceway ponds with simple requirements. I will give you the picture of the process. Mm -hmm.